Hey folks, it's Brian Gregg with another RWD screencast. Uh, welcome back for those of you who have been following along on my series. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about HTML5 and specifically around uh, the indexed DB feature, which uh, was uh, introduced at that time. We're going to be taking a look at how it can be used for progressive web apps, uh, mainly um, how it can be used to leverage the user's local environment. Uh, this is something that can also be done using local storage, uh, which can be used to store data when the user's connection is dropped, uh, if they have any sort of latency issues, uh, or if the user simply wants to work offline. Uh, this gives you the option to use local storage to manage uh, transactional data. So as opposed to our uh, local storage techniques, which allow us to store key value pairs on the user's local machine, and IndexedDB implementation is going to allow us to store transactional data. So when we're working with very large amounts of data, uh, that's going to be something that will be uh, invaluable. Uh, this is going to allow us to manage an entire data store on a user's local machine. Uh, a few salient points uh, to mention before we get started. Uh, IndexedDB uses a same origin policy to prevent any sort of cross-domain uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, it is asynchronous, uh, which is what we're going to be looking at in this uh, tutorial, but there is a synchronous version as well, if that's something that you would uh, require. Uh, it uses key value pairs similar to JavaScript objects, and most importantly, it uses a transactional database. Transactional databases um, allow you to store units of work to be performed against the database uh, independent of other transactions. And this is going to be very important when we look at how IndexedDB. Uh, performs overall record management. Uh, it also uses callbacks uh, to process results when you read and write from the database. The first thing uh, that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to instantiate a connection to your database. Uh, you are then going to want to create an object store. Uh, so I want to get some of this terminology out of the way first before we uh, dive into some of the code. Uh, the object store in particular is something that you really need to have a good firm grasp on before you start working with these uh, th this API. The object store is basically just an interface where you're going to use to store your records and uh, key value pairs before they're loaded into your database. So it's uh, sort of a, a container where uh, you'll establish a transaction, you'll associate that transaction to the object store, you'll um, store a bunch of data in that object store, and uh, you will then load it into the database. Uh, every object store needs a key. Uh, this is a unique value in your object, similar to if you've worked with relational databases, every table needs a primary key. Uh, and in this case, every object store is going to need its own unique key. Uh, there's two types of keys. One is the key path. The other is the key generator. Uh, the key path is using a unique value from your data that you want to use as the key in your object store. The key generator is when you want to have a unique value assigned uh, dynamically to the values in your object store. Uh, in addition to creating keys, uh, you can also create indexes. Again, if you're familiar with databases, you know that indexes are used so that you can quickly search through the data in your tables. Uh, and in much the same way, here you can assign indexes to the values in your uh, object stores so that they can quickly be searched uh, as opposed to the um, objects themselves, which uh, will be accessible, but they uh, any values that aren't associated with a key or an index, uh, will you'll be able to access them, but they won't be available to you to search and uh, key off of. Uh, for every uh, uh, interaction that you want to do in your database, adding, removing, um, or uh, updating data, you're going to need to start a transaction. Uh, transactions can be defined as read-only, read-write, or version trained. And uh, we'll be taking a look at how to uh, write a transaction 
uh, in order to make modifications to the database. Uh, and let's take a look at some code now. Here we have a application uh, template that I'm uh, set up for this, which just has an HTML5 boilerplate, the main JS, which has a JSON object uh, or that contains the names of some comic books that I would proudly add to my collection. Uh, so what we want to do here, let's start by uh, verifying that we have the a browser that supports this index.db okay and this is just going to verify that we're using a modern browser and if uh, we happen to be using an older browser we'd be able to handle that accordingly so we then want to create our request and our request is actually going to be the instantiation of our database so we are going to call indexed db dot open and uh, we have not created a database yet so we're going to create this new database called comics db and we are going to pass it a version of one uh, this version of one can be incremented if you are making changes to the overall schema of the database so that your users who do have data stored uh, locally on their machine will get the new schema updated and uh, otherwise uh, the schema will remain the same and uh, the users will just continue to add data to their local storage. We then want to um, do some basic error handling so let's just do a request dot on error. And this is going to just console log the error value that will potentially come back. And we'll do a request that on success. And this we will just console log out success. All right, now let's just do a quick check here, just a sanity check to make sure that everything's working as expected. All right, we're getting our success message. Go to our application. And we can see our comics database is created. I'm gonna delete it so that when we rerun this, uh, it doesn't already see that database with the version one is in existence uh, and it'll uh, create a new database like we expect. So next step we want to do is uh, we want to just on upgrade needed. The on upgrade needed is going to be a function that will um, run if the uh, version of the uh, schema on the user's uh, uh, local storage is a lower version than the one that uh, we have uh, defined in our application. And since this will be our first time running it, uh, it will uh, run this on upgrade needed because the database won't exist because we just deleted it from local storage. So from here, we want to create a, uh, let's say var db equals e dot target result. And that is going to pull the, um, uh, the, the value of e, which is going to be the uh, database returned from the request. So this uh, callback function is going to have access to the request that we defined up here in the uh, index db.open. And we are going to have that uh, result object within that uh, return value, uh, which we'll be passing into our db uh, variable. And this will give us access to the database 
within this function after um, the uh, function call is com after the um, the database is instantiated. Remember, I said this was all running asynchronously, so we want to make sure that these functions are executing after our database has been instantiated. The next thing that we want to do is uh, we want to create our object store. So um, like I had said earlier, the object store is important because that's where we're actually going to be storing our data before it gets written to the database. It's kind of like our tables in a relational database. And we are going to create object store and uh, notice some of the um, uh, differences in case sensitivity. Uh, uh, these <coughs> uh, functions are all in lower case, whereas these functions on the database are in like a camel case here. And we are going to pass uh, the name. We're going to call this something like comics. And we are going to pass uh, some configuration parameters here. And uh, this is going to be our uh, key path. And our key path is going to be the ID. Now, uh, the ID we've already defined in our object up here. Uh, this is a unique number that I've assigned to every one of our objects in our My Comics uh, array. And the reason why I did that was because I knew we were going to be using a key path and I wanted to have a unique identifier. If we didn't have a unique identifier, we could have used a key generator to create an ID on the fly. Um, but uh, just for simplicity's sake, we're going to use a key path. All right. In addition to that, we want to create a um, uh, we want to create some indexes on our on our data because we want to make some of these uh, we want to at least make the titles searchable. So object store is going to be equal to I'm sorry object store we want to call the uh, create index function index function and uh, we are going to say title which is the value uh, from the source and title which is the uh, value that we're going to be calling the index within the data store within the object store and uh, we just want to define if it's going to be unique so unique false because I don't know maybe I have two amazing fantasy number 15s in my collection of comic books who knows um, so let's uh, go ahead and we're going to save this let's just uh, do another one of our sanity checks here just to make sure that everything's working as expected still getting a success message so that's positive let's refresh our databases here and let's see what we have in local storage we now have our comics uh, db we've got our comics uh, object store and within there the comics object store has its key path of ID and it has a key path of title and the value here which would be where the object is going to be stored so so far so good let's uh, delete this database again because we're gonna to want to rerun this once we actually load some data in here and uh, the next thing that we want to do is uh, we want to another uh, callback here for uh, object store transaction on complete and this on complete function uh, again we're going to pass the value of e just a reference to this um, to the object store and uh, this is where uh, we're going to want to actually start um, uh, setting the values from our uh, my comics from our uh, from our JSON object. So again, we are going to create a, a, a variable which is going to call it store, and store is going to be. Uh, pulled in from our DB 
transaction. And uh, this is going to take, um, we can pass in either an object store or an array of object stores. So we're just gonna pass in our comics object store. And uh, we're going to pass in, uh, so once we're actually working, uh, creating a transaction here, uh, what we want to do is we want to define whether this is going to be a read transaction, a read write transaction, or some kind of an update to the schema. So uh, we actually want to write data to our database. So this is going to be a read write transaction. And we want this transaction to be on the object store. And uh, this is going to be specifically on the comics object store. Okay. And that looks good. This is supposed to be low, all lowercase for the on complete. Okay. Next thing we want to do is uh, we just want to create a uh, for loop here because uh, we now want to loop through our. Um, our my comics uh, array. So for i equals zero, i is less than my comics length plus plus. Okay. So here's our for loop, and uh, this for loop. We are going to, for every uh, value in my comics, we are going to perform an add, and it's going to be of my comics i. Okay. Now, let's just uh, verify that this is all working. Success. Let's take a look at our application here. Refresh, comics, title. Okay, I'm not seeing any data come in yet. So, uh, oh, you know what? Let me just take a look here. Let's delete the database. Refresh, refresh. All right, and there it is. We now have local storage uh, of our data. We have uh, four values. It has each has the ID, the publish date, and the title. Uh, and within there, we have the um, the titles indexed so that we can search on those. And uh, we have all of the respective details along with those. We could have added in additional. Um, uh, indexes as well and uh, much more data so now we have local storage where we're retaining some information about uh, the application offline if I lost my connection or if I uh, left and came back this data would uh, be retained we could then you know uh, check it back against the uh, source data make sure that it's um, it's up to date, but um, it allows you something to, to work with uh, in an offline manner so that uh, when you do eventually regain a connection, uh, it can sync that data back up again. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at this. Um, uh, definitely we'll revisit this if there's interest. Uh, I hope that this was uh, uh, insightful. Uh, this is something that uh, I found uh, uh, very, very interesting, very useful, and day-to-day uh, -day activity. So I um, uh, hope you did as well. Thank you very much. And uh, remember to subscribe, remember to like, remember to share and comment. Uh, always appreciate your uh, feedback uh, as well as uh, any uh, comments. Please direct them to me on Twitter at Ignore Intuition, and I'm more than happy to discuss. Thank you very much.